Hello friends, we're just getting started. We are in our quarantine devotions right now. Um, we're in James chapter 1, and it's good to see everybody today. Um, hope you're doing well. Um, we're going to go ahead and get right into the devotion so if you have your Bible, go to James chapter number 1. We're just going to look at one verse today, verse number 19. So James chapter 1 and verse number 19. Uh, I just want to remind everybody um, that we're doing Facebook Live every single day uh, at 11 o'clock. On Wednesdays, we're going to keep the same schedule uh, as we normally do, um, which is the uh, 6 p.m. So... Um, so Wednesday at 6, we're going to keep doing that, and uh, but uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, Friday, we're going to be doing um, 11 o'clock devotions. And then Sunday, uh, we're still going to keep with the um, 11 o'clock uh, time as well online for now, okay? So if you have your Bible, James chapter number 1, verse number 19, we're going to talk about one of my old friends today. Um, and this old friend of mine is anger. Yes, absolutely. So it says in verse number 19, James 1, verse number 19, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Okay? Um, so we've got a couple of points here we're going to go over today. Uh, it's very interesting, as we look through this verse... The very first word in this verse is wherefore. So that's the 19th verse. There's 18 previous verses. And all of that has to do with the wherefore. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. We're not going to read all 18 of those verses in order to explain what the wherefore is. But whenever you see a wherefore in the Bible, you need to look and see what it's there for. Okay, a therefore and a wherefore. Um, and so... It says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, he's still talking to the same group of people, right? He's talking to, he's reminding them that they're saved, uh, which is a great practice when we're, when we're being angry, when we're feeling anger. Um, he says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear. Um, and when you look up the definitions of these words, they are just as simple as the wording right here in the King James, um, when it's saying, let every man be swift to hear, that's exactly what it means. Just be very quick, be very quick to listen, okay? Uh, slow to speak, so be very quick to listen, be very um, slow to speak, and be very slow to get angry. And then he gives the reason, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. We try to use wrath to control the situation when in reality the situation is revealing what we're trying to control. So oftentimes when we're going through trials and temptation, um, we forget all of the good things and we start to really look and see, um, we really start fighting for control and um, we say, if the situation changed, then I wouldn't be angry. And we go to God in prayer and we say, change the situation so I won't be angry. Um, when in reality, God is trying to teach us in this passage, God is using the situation to change us, to change me, to change you. God's trying to say, change your heart. Um, when we feel anger, we need to stop. When we feel anger, we need to stop. Okay? Uh, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. He's going all the way through all of these wonderful things that God has, um, these plans he has for us, and these behaviors that he's looking for um, with uh, trials and temptation. And then he gets to the point where he says, you need to make sure that you are um, swift to hear. In a trial, we're very quick to turn off our hearing. Uh, in a trial, we're very quick to speak. We're not. We're, we're tempted to not think about what we're about to say, and in a trial, we are very quick to get angry. Number one, anger comes out in trials and temptations. Let me read the verse one more time. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. 
Anger comes out in trials and temptations. We can be reminded in verse number two where it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Um, when In verse number three, if you feel the pressure, you feel the urge to be angry and stay angry. Okay, Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. We're feeling the pressure. We don't want to be patient. Instead, we get angry. This pressure to be angry has a root cause. God is testing your faith and trying to build your patience. Patience is cheerful endurance. Faith is not just belief. It's not just saying, I've got to believe, I've got to believe, I've got to believe. Faith is action based on belief in God's word, or it's based on the promises of God's word. So oftentimes when we're going through a trial, we can say, God's testing my faith, and we can think, this is just my belief. He's testing to see if I believe this. Well, that's true, but he's also testing to see if you're willing to trust him and commit to the action that his word is prompting you to take. Um, patience is, we, we must have patience with where God has you right now. Uh, right now, the context is obviously the COVID-19, the coronavirus in quarantine. We're all stuck at home, but this can be something, this truth of uh, being quarantined can be something where, uh, we can use for the rest of our life. It's in any tip, uh, particular situation in life when you're just stuck. You don't want to be stuck where you're stuck. You're immobile. You don't have as many cho choices as you want to have. You don't have as much power as you want to have, not as much freedom, and and you're stuck. And that's oftentimes what trials do to us is that puts us in a situation when we just can't. We can't change anything. We can't do anything. And in those particular situations, we are uh, just banging around like a like a big bull in a in a chute, and we're just banging around and just we want to get out. We want to be done with this. And uh, oftentimes we look at our faith as if I believe, then God will get me out. And God is trying to say, yes, that may be true. But more importantly, faith is unlocking the reason of why God is allowing us to be in this situation in the first place. He's trying to teach us something. He's trying to develop something inside of us. And so we need to understand anger comes out in trials and temptations. God is trying to do something inside of you. Stop getting angry and start asking for wisdom. Okay, uh, verse number four, let, let patience have her perfect work. They may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So he's saying, allow God to use this situation to develop patience in you. He's trying to develop something inside of you, uh, 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 an internal strength, uh, an internal faith in him. Uh, and then uh, verse five, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Um, we can get angry instead of pray. <laughs> and God's trying to say, you need to pray we need to start a conversation with God about whatever we're getting angry about. Remember, once again, let me say this, faith is not just belief, it is action based on the promises of God's word. And we can get angry because we don't want to trust the promise and do it. And we can say, I want to believe this and I know this is true, but our flesh is really fighting against that and we get angry. Because we don't, we don't want to take that step of faith and that, that step of, of trust in the Lord. Um, and so again, we need to realize God's trying to teach me this. So stop getting angry. We need to look at anger as an indication. Anger is an indication that God's trying to do something in my life. Um, anger is an indication of where my heart has been. If we go to Luke chapter number six and verse number 45, Luke 6 and verse number 45. So we've just looked at the context in which this verse was written. We've kind of looked at the wherefore. Now we're in Luke 6 and verse number 45. And it says here, look at verse number 43, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And this is, a, you know, an, a, a common 
uh, illustration, we understand that if, if there's fruit that's consistently bearing bad fruit, it's because there's something wrong with the tree. All right, so he's giving a quick illustration here, verse 44. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man, verse 45, out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. It is almost impossible for you to harbor anger. Actually, biblically, it's impossible for you to harbor anger in your heart and for it not to come out. So if we're constantly seeing ourselves with these angry, angry, angry words, we've got to ask ourselves, why is this happening? Okay, well, number one, trials and temptations will bring that to the surface. But number two, it's an in, anger tells me the treasure of my heart, or it tells me what have I been treasuring in my heart. Every situation and every value and every uh, the, the things of the flesh and the things of the spirit, they both are resident in my heart, and I have a choice of what to push out and what to keep in. It's just like when you go through the refrigerator, and uh, boy, that can be a scary thing sometimes is going through your refrigerator if you haven't in a while, and you open up those vegetable drawers and you're like, oh my goodness, what is this? And you think it's kind of squishy or maybe there's something growing there, it's pretty gross, and you look at it and you, th and you toss it out. And so when we're going through a trial and temptation, that's what God's trying to do to our heart. He's trying to reveal to us, this is what you have been treasuring in your heart. A very good illustration of this, a Bible story of this, is actually Peter. And we'll just look at a couple of verses here and I'll just read them for you. It says in Luke 22 and verse number 31, this statement of the Lord was just prior to when Peter denied the Lord. Denied the Lord in mm -hmm. anger. Denied the Lord with swearing and cursing. And it says in Luke 22, verse 31, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. And then it goes on to say in Matthew 26, and verse 71 through 75, when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him, talking about Peter, and said unto them that were there, this fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Now we know later in Peter's life, he, would, he, he responded to statements like this with incredible boldness and incredible power from the Holy Spirit. But what happened is in this situation, in this pressure situation, in this trial, in this temptation to sin, remember those things are always partners. Trials and temptations to sin are partners. What happened? Uh, it says in verse 72, and again he denied with an oath, I do not know the man. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by and said to Peter, Surely thou art also one of them, for thy speech bewrayeth thee, or it betrays you. You speak like one of those Christians, like one of those followers of Christ. Then began he to curse and to swear, saying, I know not the man. You see where he's, the anger is coming out in his speech. And his speech, this, this angry, cursing, uh, terrible speech that he's trying to disassociate himself with faith, with with uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ, with his speech. And, and it's because he's really, really struggling with what's going on in his heart. He, would, he had been treasuring and he received the warning from the Lord just prior to this, but he didn't listen to the warning. And, um, and so we need to understand that, number one, trials and temptations will bring uh, anger to the surface, and then it will reveal, number two, the treasure, what we've been treasuring in our heart, or basically what our habits have been. There's a quick quote from a commentator, Adam Clark. Those who are hasty in speech are generally of a peevish or angry disposition. A person who is careful to consider what he says is not likely to soon be angry. And of course, that's the progression that we see when we are... Uh, going through the book of James, it says um, that every man should be um, that every man should be slow. First of all, we should we should be slow. Uh, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Right. 
And so um, the next thing we see, anger is an indication. Hold on, let me get my, there we go. Anger is an indication of what I see as truly valuable in life. Because oftentimes when we're angry, we're fighting for something. As the verse says, um, the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. And there's something we're trying to work in our life. We're trying to get something. And we can use our anger to get that, but also as an indication of what we've been treasuring in our heart. Um, Ecclesiastes 7 and verse number 9. Ecclesiastes is just after the book of Proverbs, if you're not sure where that is. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse number 9. We're almost done now. These are some incredible, incredible verses for, for what we're uh, currently going through with the quarantine. And it says in verse number 9, I mean, Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 9, Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Okay, remember, hasty, right? Very, very quick to be angry. And, uh, and the verse is telling us, be swift to hear. Okay? Um, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. It, he's, it's saying it's just sitting there. It's just waiting. Right? It's like, a, it's like, a, it's like a, a fuse that's just ready to receive the spark. Verse 10, say not thou. Now guys, listen to this here now. Especially in, in the context of, 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 our, of our current situation. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former things were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. Uh, in verse number 14, in the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider. God also has set the one over against the other to the end that man should find nothing after him. What are these verses talking about? They're saying that anger resteth in the bosom of fools, but it's also trying to say that in the day of prosperity be joyful. But sometimes we have a hard time doing that. It's prosperous and we're still angry. Uh, it's, pros it's prosperous, everything's going well, and we still can't find happiness. All right? Again, that's a great indication that something's going on in our heart. Uh, but then also when things turn uh, turn bad, but in the day of adversity, consider. Um, and we need to consider, don't be angry. Okay, God's saying in the day of adversity, consider. Allow the Lord to search your heart and say, why am I so angry? Why? Wh why? What is God trying to teach me? Am I resting in something that can be taken taken away? I must use wisdom to build a good inheritance, both temporal and eternal. There are angry people right now because they haven't used wisdom in their money. They've spent foolishly and lavishly on luxuries they can't really afford. They don't have any savings. They don't have any investments. And they're scrambling. Let this be a learning moment for all of us. That if we are really, really angry with what's going on right now, boy, and our anger can be directed towards God. It can be directed towards people. It can be directed towards the government. It can be directed towards... Uh, the family, but we have to understand that overall, God is the one that's in control of everything that's going on, and there's a reason why we are so incredibly angry, and God is trying to develop some grace in our heart and in our life. There are angry people because they have enormous wealth, and it may be decreasing. This is all that they, all that they've lived for. Matthew sixteen verse twenty six. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul, or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And oftentimes we use this verse in relationship to receiving Christ as our Savior and how important that is. So many people choose to live for the things that this world offers and it costs them their very soul um, because they ignore the things that are eternal. They don't take the time. They don't investigate. They don't seek. But actually, within the context this is written, this is actually talking about discipleship and following Christ. And there are Christians who are on their way to heaven. They've been born again. They've been washed by the blood of Christ. But they live their life seeking after what the world has to offer. And their souls are dried up and they are empty and they are not content and they are 
angry, easily angry. Why is it that there's this person who may not have necessarily the best of anything? They have an older car, they may be paying rent or an older house, they don't have all the modern kitchen that everybody loves, and they seem to be they seem to be perfectly happy. Some people look at them like they're, they're simple minded. In reality, they're content. And you've got the person that's got an incredibly beautiful house, a wonderful, wonderful car. They've got a, a job that everybody would be jealous of. They've got, they get to travel. They get to do all these things. And yet they're still an angry person. They're not content. Consider that trials and temptations, that anger will come up in trials and temptations. Consider, number two, Anger tells me the treasure of my heart. It tells me what I've really been, what's really been important to me and the things that I've been uh, treasuring in my heart. And anger is an indication of what I see as truly valuable in life. Let me just make this quick application and we'll be done. You know, a lot of us are getting to spend a lot more time around our kids right now because of the quarantine. And... Sometimes it can be with parents where we we can really establish our lives in such a way where somebody else is raising our kids for us. You know, we may take them and drop them off somewhere. They have after school programs and in the summertime we can find ways for them to be busy. They have a babysitter. They um, have some kind of a some kind of a camp that they go to. And right now we are in a situation where uh, you may find yourself with your kids and you're really angry. Let me tell you something. God's trying to teach you something about your responsibility as a parent in this situation. We can't send them away. We've got to uh, accept the fact that uh, we may be selfish. We may have grown to be selfish. And that raising our kids is primarily our responsibility Train up a child in the way he should go. That's written to the parents. That's not written to the school. It's not written to the government, for sure. And it's not written to the grandparent. It's written to the parent. He's trying to teach me, God may be trying to teach me, that my kids are my responsibility and my responsibility to invest in. And just like I take the time to prepare for things that I want to be successful at, trying to put together a Bible study every single day takes time and preparation. But what about our kids? Are we taking the time to prepare and put together some kind of a, a program during this time? And that's a great thing that we need to be trying to do. Take the time to train your kids. Get to know your kids during this time. Stop fighting this time period. You, you may be angry because God is trying to draw you closer to himself and you are looking to escape. You know, sometimes we give God just enough. We stay really busy with our schedule. Uh, and we give God a couple hours on Sunday or maybe just a couple hours here and there. And it could be that we're angry right now in our spirit because we know God's trying to draw us closer to himself and we're just rejecting that. And so as we f close out this particular Bible study, let's be reminded of the fact that God loves us and that God is allowing these things to happen in our life for a reason and he's trying to develop he's trying to develop us into be into being greater Christians for himself. Thanks guys for watching. We'll uh, check in with you tomorrow. Tomorrow will be at um, 6 p.m. regular Bible study time.